We've actually seen what we think are standing waves generated, and this may be a mechanism for having a distant effect. When you have st a standing potential, you're literally creating the, the, the capacity for a distant effect. And uh, from what we see, these may be Schumann resonance related. Uh, the Schumann resonance is the uh, standing uh, 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 potential frequency patterning within the atmosphere, uh, which can be rung like a bell by lightning. And uh, um, actually, the Schumann resonances are recorded by the US Geological Survey uh, in Antarctica and Parkfield, California, and a whole bunch of different places. Uh, it's a, an, an interesting phenomenon. You're talking about people having resonance one to the other. Well, in fact, if the, if the he li is a tunable bell, and the he lur is a, a big bell that rings with harmonics, the entrainment or the, uh, the, the, uh, the determination of what frequencies that other bell is going to be generating end up being uh, 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 controlled by the healer having an entrainment effect on the he li. Um, I would suggest that this, uh, if this is in fact what our data show, and it appears to be the case, um, I, I would uh, counsel you towards caution uh, because what this would establish is connectivity not necessarily delivery of something. And if I make a phone call from here to Bill and Bill doesn't talk, we've got a connection, but there's no communication, there's nothing being delivered. So um, I, I think that this may be a mechanism for connectivity at a distance, but it may not be the delivery of the, the healing phenomenon itself. But just identifying the connection, I think, is useful. Um, and I, I think I have one minute left, which gives five minutes for questions, or no, uh, five, minutes. five minutes for questions. Excellent. Um, let me uh, show you that I actually do have references. Uh, there's a couple pages of references there. Um, and again, uh, if, you, um, if you look on the first page, you'll see my email, uh, QEEG. I do quantitative EEG. My name is Jay, QEEGJ. Uh, at sbcglobal.net. I'll be happy to forward you the PowerPoint on this as well as a lot of other stuff. If you email me, you gotta watch out. Uh, and I hope your email uh, uh, box can take big files because I usually load up the email response. Oh, you might be interested in this too. So um, uh, be well aware, uh, uh, you, know, you might get a five, 10, 15 megabyte size email reply. So um, uh, it's time for questions. Question when they ask us I will. Got one up here. Need to repeat the questions. I will. Please. I guess I represent the loyal opposition. I'm deeply opposed to the mechanistic aspects of your talk, but uh, I'm always disappointed when people talk about memory traces. <laughs> but let me talk about your model summary, which very briefly is when mind and brain interact, consciousness emerges. Right? Well, if you've got mind, you've got consciousness already. So Not necessarily. Um, we, 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 can d we can see DC field potential dynamics within, and they, they're not necessarily going to end up reporting any of those experiences to us afterwards. Um, uh, uh, one of the reasons I'm in the International Brain Research uh, Foundation is that in a, a series of three cases, they had 12 recordings. Um, and somewhere along those 12 recordings, blinded to the interpreter, the person regained consciousness. And I can see dynamics of DC present before they're conscious again. Um, and, and I was able to predict consciousness effectively blinded three times, uh, which got us a $6 million congressional earmark to finish our last two months of last year. Um, so the, the project is very well funded. Um, but DC field potentials alone, without an interaction with the brain, don't yield conscious awareness that's reported to us. Um, I can also point to people who have the DC coupling starting to happen, but they're not awake yet. They're not quite conscious, but they will report experiences. But your uh, model summary suggests you're doing something much grander. You're trying to explain what consciousness is. It seems to me you're doing something considerably more modest. Uh, you want to, if you're talking about mind, I can understand what you mean by unconscious mind, but I can't understand what you mean by non-conscious mind. Yes, and, and I think there's a large... 
uh, of variance within uh, definition of terms, which is why at the very beginning when I talked about mind, I, I suggested that I'm talking about intention, which can be measured, uh, attention, which can be measured, um, and, and uh, uh, these phenomena are, are direct current field potentials. I, I can intend to move my finger and not move it, uh, not have any muscle tension change, not have any position change at all, and when I'm intending to move that finger, I can tell that I'm intending to move it because the frontal lobe will light up with electronegativity over the appropriate supramotor or supplementary motor area. I can then quit intending without ever having done anything, and you can tell when I quit intending. And then I can intend to move it again, and then quit intending to move it. Um, on, off, on, off. And you can see that in the, in the uh, uh, DC field potentials. And then I can f eventually move it. Um, and and uh, uh, all that dynamic can be identified within the neural networks. Uh, I, I use very s distinct operational definitions of the terms. And if, if they don't agree with your definitions, that's, then we can talk about definitions. But, um, and I'm happy to be described as modest. I, that's usually not uh, that, that common a term for me. I, uh, but, I, but I'm happy to be described as that. All right, John? Uh, Jay, I had to step out briefly, so you may have already addressed this during your presentation. But okay, we'll take the next question. Then. <laughs> well, sure. well, what are your thoughts on the, uh, by, uh, on the suggestion by some that consciousness exists in even lower animals and even bacteria because of the fact that they do respond to external stimuli, yeah. and some people define that. So it gets to the definition of, of what it, using this, to do Using this definition, you can identify consciousness in animals. I, I've never tried to hook up electrodes to bacteria to, to see whether they're having these resonant phenomenon, but it, it's, it's potentially capable of being done. Um, uh, uh, you know, lower, lower animals, well, uh, you know, isn't that looking down the nose at other animals? I mean, uh, uh, what was it? Yesterday I heard something about, well, uh, they don't consider people animals somehow. Well, I don't know. <laughs> what are we, plants? <laughs> Minerals? You know, I... the, uh, the, the actual definition of what constitutes, what constitutes consciousness, because it used to be believed that animals, you know, you know, cats, dogs, were not conscious because they couldn't think. Yeah. And so, you know, if you have, a, if you have a, a, an animal that, we'll say, can't think like humans, I mean, it's obviously conscious and perceiving its environment and everything. So what, what are your thoughts yeah. on that? In, in fact, uh, uh, about four years ago, I posted uh, a number of samples of EEG online and asked people to differentiate the cat from the guinea pig, from the horse, from the human. And, uh, uh, and I offered good cash reward for anybody who could do it. Uh, nobody even bothered to try. I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, but it's there in the data. You could differentiate one from the other if you really knew what you're looking at. But all of them are conscious entities based on looking at the uh, DC field potentials, nesting, and, and, and gamma. So uh, using that operational definition of consciousness, uh, lower animals, whatever the hell that is, uh, uh, I don't know. I, uh, I hang out with people. I don't know how well, how well, how low do you need to go? You know. <laughs> so, all right, that'll be it for questions. Thank you very much, Jake. Thank you.